What's going on guys? Right on me teacher in the house and I'm here with the GPL week number 5 Pickums. As always, I am joined by our inferior analyst and biggest donut because he watched a match before Pickums happened this week. Transal, how are you doing man? Yeah, not too bad. My bad. It hasn't happened in the other weeks and I just like went all match and realized what I'd done. <laughs> Hashtag autopilot, <laughs> of course. As the same as last week, you can see the results on the screen now. We're not going to go over them in too much detail. Um, but, yeah, if you want to actually have a look at the matches briefly, if you want to throw about the results, quickly pause this video. But, yeah. Putting it simply, as we all picked pretty much the exact same results, most of them were very similar. We all got uh, six correct winners, but I also got one perfect score for differential, which means I took this week seven points to six, which puts us at a very nice total. I'm back at my two-point lead at 26 points to 24 in my race to beat Transal at something for once this season. Um... But yeah, if you don't know how pickums work, either side of me on the screen here are two coaches who are battling this week, and we break down hound, hound strengths and weaknesses of both sides, and then predict a score and who we think is going to win. Um, so, just to be clear, this week um, this was where um, Transfer was a donut. This was the game that he already watched. So unfortunately, because of that, um, we can't really do this one. Um, for those who didn't know already, um, DJ won this match 4-0, which was actually my prediction um, before I even watched the game. I just literally watched the game before we started recording this. So I would have got two points, but I got denied it. But because Transfer was a donut, we're not going to count this match towards Pickums because uh, the match has already happened. Sorry, DJ, but I would have got two points from you, so hashtag blame Transfer, right? <laughs> Alright, but either way, let's go to a breakdown that we can actually do this week, which is going to be Cap Guy and Agoshi of Team Body Press versus Crimpix of the Nightmare Shadows. Crimpix, of course, still hunting for his first win in the GPL, and Cap Guy and Agoshi coming off the back of a narrow loss against me. How do you see this one going, Transal? Um, I think Crimpix has some decent answers for for Mons. It's just it's all down to how he he plays it. He knows he makes mistakes in the games. Um, yeah, like Clef can handle a reasonable amount. The um, Charizard's probably the glaring issue. Um, but um, Graladon uh, yeah, it's Pretty decent this matchup. Um, it lacking coverage to. I don't think it gets. Uh, no, it doesn't get focus plus. I don't think it. Doesn't no, get it doesn't. Fighting. Yeah, fire or fighting. So still, it becomes a pretty big problem for it. Um, yeah. So my interest here is whether Cap Guy and Agoshi are actually going to bring Body Press because for a long while we've been joking about it how I've bought Body Press more than Team Body Press. I even bought it against Team Body Press with my Ore Beetle. Um, we haven't really seen it and I'm kind of somewhat surprised that we haven't seen it. I think in this matchup it may not even be a bad idea to bring it. Obviously Clef resisted but it will not be able to deal with uh, plus 6 Body Press without Unaware. And if it is unaware, it's weak to entry hazards, it's also weak to toxic and things like that. Of which Umbreon can deal a solid job toxic in the cleft switch in and things like that. Um, mm. I feel like, honestly, I do like Cap Guy's matchup a little bit more. I think, yes, the Duraludon can hit offensively. It does actually get Thunderbolt for Charizard, um, so it can't necessarily freely switch in. Uh, things like the Darmanitan, if it's scarfed, could cause an issue or two. Uh, but outside of that, you're largely looking at utility, and utility and bulk don't always mix too well. Um, so, looking at it, honestly, I feel like the natural bulk on Cap Guy's team is kind of hard to break at the best, and given the fact that Crimpix doesn't have 
too many offensive options, in my opinion. Like, yes, Braviary can be good offensively, but it's more known as a doubles Pokemon. Uh, Rotomo, pretty decent offensively. It's more commonly run offensively than defensively, although from what I've seen, Crimpix has brought mostly more passive Rotomo sets, so that's something I'm looking forward to see different. Um, Gastro, not really known for offensive prowess, but can be offensive depending on the setup, but in this matchup, I can't see offensive Gastro coming. Um, so you're kind of looking at kind of like the top three as your offensive options. If it's a Carmine Clef, um, you know, if Duraludon's heavy on the offensive side, Dalmanitan is probably have to be scarfed. Um, and I'm just not sure I can trust Krimpix to mechanically pull this off. I think Cap Guy and Agoshi have been playing extremely well in the last couple of weeks, um, especially taking Solo down, taking a close nose loss against me. They weren't too disheartened about that either because I talked to them about it after the game. Uh, yeah, it was a very close one thing. Uh, it was good games all around. I think Cap Guy and Agoshi mechanically are way ahead of Krimpix and I feel like their team has enough weaponry and answers for anything Krimpix wants to throw at them. Am I confident enough to back them as a 6-0? Seeing as Cap Guy was absolutely harping on at us, be begging us to beg for a 6-0. I'm not convinced. Um, but in in good sport and having a good fun, alright Cap Guy and Agoshi, I challenge you to 6-0 Krimpix. I'm going for 6-0. <laughs> alright. I'm gonna be the one with the real, res real result, and it's gonna be a 3 0. I'm feeling like Krimis can take some kills. Fair, I like it's it. Probably be the best he'd do this season. Well, you never know. You never know. That's the, some of the things about this game, it's kind of an interesting setup. Alright, coming in at battle number 3 then is gonna be Shadow versus Nitro. Yet another stylistic mismatch. I think that's going to be a very common thing this week. Um, Shadow, of course, taking a somewhat clutch of a win against Professor. Where Professor threw the game. Um, but, yeah, Shadow, of course, back in his old ways. And Nitro, in kind of familiar territory, I think, really struggling this season. Uh, this team just has not worked for him all season. Uh, how do you see this one going, though? Um... And a Scorch does okay, but that Incineroar might be the way it's stopping it. It can lower its, lower its attack. So Caldeo just sets definitely. up on it for the most part, even through max overgrowth. Mm. It can kind of just it can be like a subset and kind of stall out G-Max if it wants to. And then just hit it after. Um, I don't think he's Oh, he bring Reunix against DJ, but he didn't bring it against Sylvie. He wasn't um, able to really do anything with Reunix against DJ because it got flinched after an high school spell that had lived. Yeah. Yeah. Reunix is a little rough because of Grimmsnarl. Um, uh, one thing I have just noticed on here is Shadow's team has Toxicroak still on it, but not Flygon. But never mind. Uh, that should be a Flygon yeah. instead of Toxicroak, guys, but don't worry about that. Um, Flygon itself I don't actually think is the best matchup in the world, um, but it could be a bit of a threat, especially to that alone on Raichu. But yeah, I don't see Flygon being too impactful here. Yeah. Uh, Drowled on uh, having speed over Flapple. Uh, if it wants to come in, maybe it's like a Scarf Revenge or something. Uh, it sets up, but it's uh, Apple... it's all right. Yeah, I think uh, the one thing that we have kind of glossed over here is Mudsdale. I think Mudsdale for me is very underrated here. Uh, Mudsdale, of course, um, is weak to Pharaoh in some respects, but those stamina boosts can really stack up that body press damage, and Pharaoh does not really appreciate body press at all. Um, and things like that does get the rock coverage move for rock slide for center scorch uh, so that's not an easy switch in either um you could also hit the araquanid and various other things doesn't really get much to hit things like reuniclus though uh that's something that we could look for but that being said though there's a grim snarl and an incineral sitting there with reuniclus's name on it uh even dust yeah. can sit in on reuniclus all day uh doesn't really matter uh i think the issue is gonna be how can nitro even 
find a win condition here. Like, his win condition is hope that Shadow makes a mistake. I feel like I feel like this matchup is rough for Nitro in just about every possible way. Um, like, setup Malamar is great, but what's the setup? Um, there's no sticky webs on Shadow's team for what I'm seeing, unless Blossom for some reason gets it, but I don't think it does. Um, so there's not really enough setup abuse um, that Malamar can do. Uh, the superpower can be obnoxious. Uh, there are things that um, don't really appreciate a contrary superpower. The Raladon and Cineroar being good examples. Um, but there is a Dusclops sitting there. Uh, so that's the other factor here. Dusclops with Widow Hex beats Malamar 1v1, in my opinion. So yeah, Also, so to note, the Incineroar coming in on the um, Malamar um, would give it a boost. I'm not mistaken with the Intimidate. It would, yeah. Um, yeah. but again, like, is Incineroar switching in on Malamar? Is Shadow gonna be, br me gonna, gonna do that? Probably not, right? So, like, looking at this, I feel like this is a comfortable win for Shadow. He might need to sack him on to get position, which is the only thing I think might be the factor here. So, just on that note, I'm gonna be on air on the caution, and I'm gonna back Shadow for a 5-0. He's not facing uh, T-Spikes this week, so I'm going to go 5-0 as well. Yeah. <laughs> Seems to be the common thing for him. That's true. Alright, coming in, battle number four then. It's going to be Denistrio, who by his own admission has had a pretty garbage season, versus Professor, who's on a bit of a lost streak, coming out to face some of the top teams. How do you see this one going? Oh boy, so... Sand looks like, um, well Rhyperia is actually interesting, Pythagoras can get, take on a drill to a point, he can get Haze as well, mm -hmm. um, G-Max is, uh, I don't think it, oh Sludge, oh Boom Burst, right, um, yeah, Toxicity looks very good, um, Rhyperia, I think is definitely like seeing a lot of like where Rhyperia could take a hit from Excadrill um, and kill it back kind of thing um, if it's not plussed up and it's a great wall for Toxicity. Um, yeah. So. Where is he on? Yeah, I'm looking at Verizion here, and I'm actually kind of thinking, well, actually, Verizion can beat quite a lot of this team so long as it's left untouched. I can yeah. see, like, even, like, a Sword Dance set coming here. Uh, Sword Dance with close combat hits, Lapras, Hydreigon, Copper Ajar, all insanely it's hard. a lot of fighting weak. And then, yeah. like, Leaf Blade for Rhyperia hits incredibly hard as well. So there's a lot of things that Verizion can actually do this match. Uh, something I have noticed with Denistro is he's even not brought it, or he's played it very poorly. Um, so that's something I am concerned a lot a lot about. Sand is kind of obnoxiously threatening, but Copper Ajar is kind of not really caring about Sand. Does get the coverage moves to hit both the Drill and the Gigalith. So uh, that's an interesting point to look at. I think somewhere down the line we need to look at possible burns. Um, Kofag, I believe, gets will wisp as well, so um, yep. that could really hard cripple things like the Excadrill and the Verizion pretty easily. Um, I still haven't seen anything from this Thieve all that Denise has been raving about. Uh, I don't see anything coming there. I think Hitman Chan just sticks two fingers up to it. Or sticks a boxing glove up in his case, but... Hmm. I actually think the screens can be really unfortunate for Toxtricity. Um, the resonance can actually cause it an issue. Uh, I believe Lapras does get a ground move. Uh, I've got a funny feeling it gets a weird ground move. Um... Evo does get psychic, but it would probably have to set up a nasty plot to one shot the hit one chain. Yeah, and, and um, is it going to be allowed to set that up? Probably not, right? Um, so. And there's a high drag on there, and like the best thing I think you can hit from Evo to a high drag on is like hyper beam or something silly like that. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't get any fighting coverage. Yeah, it's drill run that Lapras gets. I knew, I knew it got a. Oh really? I wow. knew it got a weird ground move. It does also get Fisher. Which is kind of funny, but yeah, it does get bulldoze as well. So, does yeah. actually get a few little ground moves. So Max Quake could be a little bit sneaky. Um, things like that could be a problem. I think Lapras actually does put in 
quite a lot of work on its own here. Um, the Water Stab hits quite a lot of this team. The Ice Stab also hits quite a lot of this team. Surprisingly hard. Yeah. Um, so I think Lapras, Hydreigon, potentially Rhyperia are probably going to be the big threats here. Um, and then we need to see from where Denistrio is coming from. Probably Primarina is probably going to be the big answer here. Uh, mm. Does need a Dodger Power from Copperasia if he brings that in though. But I can definitely see a very hard-hitting Primarina set coming. Brazian we've already mentioned. Um, Arcanine could be interesting. Uh, could be a Copperasia answer, especially with Intimidate. Um, just needs to be careful not to bring a red card into it. Uh, if it's Sheer Force. Kappa. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Uh, looking yeah. at it, uh, I actually think there are some good threats on both sides here. I think it's honestly a toss-up. I think it's um, a question of who's going to play it better. And with how kind of subpar Denisio has played by his own admission this season, uh, Professor can be quite down on himself as well, but I feel like Professor's played much better this season. Uh, so I'm going to edge this towards Professor's favor. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a wash. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty close. Uh, I'll give Professor 3 0, I think. I know he's said it in the past that he feels like Dinny's a better battle than him with other things. Um, don't know how much that will play into this match, as you've said that Dinny's been. Or as he's, yeah, playing pretty bad this season. Um, curious how he'll deal with the war of it all from. Lapras, um, if we maybe, um, brick break on things, but, um, yeah, I'm gonna go 3 to Dinny. Oh, that's a ballsy one. That will be a very spicy match to watch now. Alright, coming in, battle number five is gonna be Solo, who, quite frankly, choked unacceptably last week. Uh, against Tyler, who's been on a bit of a downturn. Um, Tyler's really had a rough couple of weeks. Uh, he did something to pick up. He did pick up Pharisee this week, dropped the Galarian Stunfisk, uh, making that what you will. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the change. I don't think it actually makes much of a difference. Um, so that's one thing that could be said. Um, does get spikes and seeds, though. So that could be the option that he's gone for instead of the Sucker Punch priority that... Uh, Glaring Stomphus card, but yeah, how do you see this one going? Uh, uh, I think it's very heavily in, in Solo's favor. Um, there's like somewhat out, I think like Spec Sylveon could dent holes in this team if played correctly. It's got to kind of play around, um, Rotom Heat and Corviknight, um, but it can kind of spam hyper voice quite a bit like it still does a sizable chunk to them um depending on on the set um that they bring um appleton g max i don't think has a very good matchup i'm not too much of a hand, uh, fan of that g max unfortunately um corvanite i think has a very good matchup outside of like Chandelure. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those things where, again, we're looking at Tyler now at this point. We've seen it two weeks in a row. What happens if he falls behind? Well, there doesn't seem to be any comeback mechanic. Um, so when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, well, how can Solo hit really hard from the get-go? Uh, things like Corviknight does get Tailwind, which can really set up Dracovish for a lot of success. Pangoro is a fantastic wall breaker, hits things like Necrozma incredibly hard, uh, various things like that. Uh, Pangoro actually does quite a lot of work against this team, uh, so that's yeah. something that we're we're looking at here. Even something like Glaceon, right? Appleton gets thick fat, but Glaceon at a high hitting offensive can really cause issues. Uh, I believe it gets freeze dry this gen for Quagsire as well, so that's something else yeah. to look at. Um, Rotom Heat, I think, very solid pivot. Um, does have to watch out for Quagsire, of course, but that's pretty easily covered. Uh, things like God of War can bring, hit pretty hard as well. Maybe he brings the target again, but <laughs> the ring target again. Maybe. I don't yeah, know. he's it's brought really it good. once. I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, but yeah, I think 
there's a lot of weaponry that if Solo plays hard and aggressive early, which we know Solo can do and we've seen it before, um, I feel like Tyler can just get out-muscled pretty easily here. Um, and given how Tyler's had a rough couple of weeks for the GPL, I feel like that's probably going to happen again. I feel like if Tyler falls behind, I think he loses pretty badly. Um, the matchup is not in Tyler's favor, whichever way you look at it. Um, so for me, I think this is a relatively easy pick for me to put Solo at a 4 0 win. Uh, I think that's a pretty safe bet in my opinion. Yeah. Um, curious if this will be Rotom Frost's debut. Um, I like, kind of like it. But, um, I'm going to go 4 0 Solo as well. I love how these pickings have got to the point where we're starting to agree each other with each other quite a bit now. <laughs> Alright, coming in battle number 6 then is going to be a very interesting one for me I think this week. is going to be Exo who seems somewhat galvanized this season. These changes have really fixed his team and his playstyle pretty nicely. Versus Nico, who got a somewhat surprise win after Solo choked but has been very very strong throughout the season. Where do you see this one going? Yeah, so there's some interesting cases here. So we've got the Gengar and the Snorlax GMAXs, and Snorlax can kind of come in on Gengar for free. You might have to watch out for like a trick. Um, if he maxes the uh, Max Knuckles, probably not going to do a lot because it reduced power. Um, also, Kong can like Rina Regis if it like knocks off on the Rina Regis it then gets wandering spirit so it lose like guts if he happens to be guts um, interesting there um, yeah it's definitely it's a lot of tendency roll. towards the guts can kill to set I'm actually kind of looking at this and thinking well what if he doesn't run guts and what if he runs iron fist I uh, what let's say what if he runs like iron fist with things like mark punch for Snorlax Probably doesn't do a huge amount, but you can then start getting away with things like Ice Punch for Draco's ult and Runa Regis. Uh, things like Fire Punch for Robombi and Serena. Uh, Thunder Punch ruins Mantine. Um, as yeah. I actually suddenly... Iron Fist feels really good here. Um, I don't recall Nico ever straying away from the Flame Orb gut set. Um, but I feel like this might be a decent opportunity to do that. And then comes the question of Obstagoon. Now, he brought Obstagoon against me and it didn't do anything. Um, it got an Obstruct off but died to a Body Press from a Gudra. Um, I'm interested to see if he tries bringing Guts Obstagoon with things like Stab Knockoffs and Facades. Really start hurting a lot of this team. Um, that's something yeah. I'll be looking at. Does need to watch out for Sock, which Exo has been using relatively okay this season. He didn't use it too well against me, but he's definitely used it better in other matches. Um, so that would be one thing it needs to watch out for, but that thing's not taking a stab for Sardana switch in from a Guts Obstagoon. It's just not happening. Um, so that kind of becomes a question mark for me. Uh, then we start looking at things like the Appleton, which I feel like is a bit of a wonky matchup. Uh, can definitely hit some of these teams. I could see like a Subseed set potentially coming. Uh, doesn't need to watch out for Serena in this instance. Um, Charizard, of course, murders Serena. I uh, may end up having to be Scarfed. Uh, Scarf Jarazard could start putting pressure on some of this team. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how these two teams build. I think this would have been easier for me to do a pick em if um, I could see what they actually brought to the match. But um, for me, I'm looking at Exo and I'm thinking if he stops bringing Baton Pass on Jirachi and starts bringing an offensive set, that could cause some pressure. Um, Rina Ringus is definitely interesting. Please make Robombi do some work. That would be nice. Um, but yeah, like Snorlax gets a lot of coverage moves, so it can definitely cause issues for this team. Um, so that's what I'd be looking for. Um, Salazzle's kind of got an interestingly awkward matchup. Um, yeah, and he opted not to bring that up a lot of the times as well, which I thought it would be coming in certain things. Um, yeah, he did opt for Scarf Jirachi last week, and it, it put on work there, so. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to be looking for now. I think, it, momentum-wise, it's close between these two. Um, 
Ooh, who's gonna play this better? I think it's gonna be close. I think if Gengar's allowed to do whatever it wants, then it, Nico wins. But if it's not, then I think Axo wins. So I'm gonna yeah. take a bit of a stab in the dark here. I'm gonna say Axo wins this 2-0. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Nico, because I'm gonna say Axo. I think it's down to how he plays Runerigus and, and Snorlax. Um, I think Runerigus got a lot of pressure this week. But yeah, I'm going with Exo. 3 0. We're back to you this time. I, I wanted to back you last week. Yeah, but... same. I really wanted to, and now I regret not doing it. But yeah. <laughs> Alright then, so now we're going to get to our matches. Starting with mine. God help me. I'm super excited for this match, but I'm also kind of nervous for it as I am taking on Burger, who is currently unbeaten and playing extremely well this season. Break it down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so do we see the Specs meme Cremorant, or does he go, wait, this is not a good matchup for it. There's a Zerora right there. <laughs> Come on, Burgo, don't be boring. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm joking, yeah. obviously. Um, Tenaconda G-Max is an interesting matchup for the Zerora. Yeah, it gets gross, not... Um, kind of Deprento brings it in. Zero is super tough because he most likely you almost have to sack something every time you bring it in. Um, depending on what set you ring. Um, yeah, Corviknight. Um, it's seasonally wrecked by the Zero Aura. Um, other things. Not too bad. Um, if it's opting for like setup. Um, Rapidash is fairly annoying for it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this is one of those horrible matchups where Burger looks at Zeraora and thinks, what the fuck do I do against this? Uh, because Zeraora can actually outspeed basically everything on this team except an unburdened boosted Excelgor. Uh, but Excelgor is not going to take even something like a Fire Punch. Um, that Zeraora yeah. can get, Exalgor doesn't take it, Exalgor's way too frail. Um, and even at plus one if with Throat Spray, which I think I saw last week in his last match, um, that yep. is not killing Zeraora with any HP investment. So, uh, it's kind of an awkward situation. Uh, I do think he can somewhat deal with Zeraora, uh, depending on what he brings. But Zeraora gets so many coverage moves that I don't think he has a reliable way of being able to deal with Zeraora. Yeah. Sandaconda is probably his best answer. Um, but when I look at Sandaconda, I suddenly start looking at Whimsicott and I start looking at Aura Beetle. Uh, you know, I can see like Toxic Stalling, even something like Sigilyph, things like that. I suddenly start looking at what answers I actually have for that thing. And suddenly it doesn't really feel that threatening to me anymore. So uh, mm. it's one of those question marks whether how much can Burger do to stop my Zeraora putting in work. Um, yeah. And then even alongside that is like, well actually Whimsicott's kind of awkward because um, Whimsicott outspeeds a lot of this team as well. Um, things like that. Rapidash could be fun. Uh, I've brought Rapidash the last two weeks uh, so he might expect me to bring it again. The Alolan Potion pickup uh, for Scrafty still confuses me. I'm not really sure if he brought this as an intention for me because I don't see why you would ever want to bring that when I've got a Kabalion sitting there. Because um, Kabalion can also cause problems too. Um, I haven't thought of Kabalion too much yet. Um, I have started to prep a team, but I haven't finalized it yet. But yeah, even something like Gudra can handle the specially offensive mons relatively well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. It's a very close run match. Uh, I haven't brought Ride on this season. It could come this season. Does get does come as much. Just get a few things that I could sneakily put in there, including Surf Specs Ride on OP. Uh, just kidding, but <laughs> but yeah, I think even like looking at this, I think almost every Pokemon on my team this week has a reason to come. Uh, I think every reason every Pokemon on this team is viable. Um, which could be a scary thing for Burger looking at this team. Um, and also, like, fun fact, Burger's never beaten me in a draft league match, so that's a, another bit of spice to put in there. Uh, will Burger get his first win against me? 
You never quite know. Oh, he wants it. Uh, I know he wants it, and I know he's Someone joked about it and talked about it, but uh, will he get it? I don't know. It's a tough one because he has improved yeah. a lot since I last played him. I I will give him that fair due. Like he's definitely played amazingly well this season, but. Of course, I'm backing myself. Um, I feel like I've got too many weapons here anyway. Um, I think it's close. I don't think it's an easy win. I'm going to put myself at 3-0, but I feel like that's optimistic. But I'm going to be an optimistic 3-0. I'm going 2-0, Burger. Bring it home. This will be your first win against Romby right here. If, Even as much as Zerora literally can have four moves to cover your whole team super effectively outside of like slurp off, um, it could bring like Iron Tail, but I don't see that coming. But yep, fair play. Yeah, I like that. I like it. And to be fair, I'd be happy for him if he got it. So we'll see. All right. In that case, we'll start looking at your match, which is of course against Mr. Setup, uh, Sylvie. Um, Finally managed to break the Sylvie rule, but he did have to do it against Nitro, so uh, definitely an interesting one, but for me, I just feel like this is way too easy for you. Uh, I feel like just looking at three of your team, and then I look at his team, and I think, okay, well, this is one, right? I see Hatterain, I see Aegislas and Cinderace, and I just think this whole team of Sylvie's is gone. Yep. Um, I don't see any realistic chance for Sylvie getting back into this. Uh, he might throw some random curveball which might throw you off, but even then I feel like you've just got answers for everything on his team. Um, I don't see too many avenues for Sylvie. Um, depends if this Flapple can get set up, but then Hatterin just trick rooms and then has Max, uh, Max Starfall. Bye. See you later. Um, so, I don't know. It's a tough one. Belly Drummy Speed Line Noon could be a thing, but then there's Aegislash, so... Uh, Crustle's chilling there. I haven't brought him yet. Maybe he's coming. Yeah, Crustle Sticky Webs. I'm calling it. He's bringing it. No, I'm joking. Uh, it doesn't get Sticky Webs. But, uh... Yeah, I know. I was being sarcastic. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it does get rocks, of course. It does get spikes. So that's one thing to pay attention to. Run Banded Crustle. I'm calling it now. Sturdy Banded Crustle. Let's go. But yeah, and that... no, all jokes aside, though, I... I'm sorry, Sylvie. Uh, I would love to see you beat Transol. It would be hilarious to me. But even I'm not crazy enough to back that. Uh, I am going to back you to 6-0, though. I'm going to put you under pressure. Oof. Okay, so I said 3-0 against Cool, and I ended up 6 0 him him um, in the end. I'm going to go 4 -0. To uh, Sylvie, right? confident enough. No, to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I'm always scared of what Mew can do. Um, I wasn't very proud of what I did this week, but in the most of the weeks, but... Maybe, maybe it'll actually do something against me. Um, Aegis Slash is right there, and it can probably take a hit, but... Well, either way, we're going to have to see, and that is going to be our pickums for this week. Hey, of course, I didn't mention it at the start. I should have done. I forgot. But, yeah, of course, you guys can have your say in the Discord as well. The matches are in there, so let us know what you think. I've seen some of you already thinking Burger are going to beat me, you mean bastards. Um, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it's going to be a fun week. going to be an interesting week. Uh, if there's any, any week where a bunch of upsets could happen, it's probably this one. Because... Uh, there's a lot of stylistic mismatches here, which on paper is a top team versus a bottom team, so we'll see. But yeah, either way, we're going to get on out of here, so thank you so much for watching. My name is Roy Bombi Teacher, that's Transel. Yep, let's get out. And let's get on out of here, so make sure to take care and stay safe, stay awesome, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.